ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتاب العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in all time situations and places and we have uh, undoubtedly every one of us have seen in the past few weeks uh, the pictures and the videos of the suffering that uh, is going on in the land of Palestine uh, at this current moment and has been going on and we've seen the destruction we've seen the uh, killing of little children innocent people destruction of uh, schools hospitals uh, and the list goes on of the destru- destruction and oppression that is going on has been going on and uh, unfortunately seems to continue to go on so we've seen this and uh, of course as muslims we feel the pain we feel the suffering of our muslim brothers and sisters and the question that comes up is what should we be doing what can we be doing to aid or help our muslim brothers and sisters who are suffering who are being oppressed who are being killed and the list goes on and Rasulullah says in the hadith, Unsur akhaka ghadiman aw madhuman. That no matter what, no matter what, we are to aid our Muslim brothers and sisters. If they are a zalim, if they are an oppressor, then we aid them by stopping them from oppressing and stopping them from committing evil. And if they are oppressed, then obviously then even, they are even in more need of our help. So what can we be doing to help our brothers and sisters? There's two main things that we can be doing two main categories of things that we can be doing to help our brothers and sisters. Number one is the material, material way of helping. And that is donations, sending aid, medicine, food, humanitarian relief, uh, raising awareness, speaking out, uh, letting people know what's going on, presenting the truth, presenting the true situation, uh, organizing boycotts, uh, protests, demonstrations, all of these are material ways of aiding and helping our brothers and sisters. And there are many different organizations, many different masajid that are carrying out these uh, duties, as we had an earlier just announced, the uh, aid campaign, donation, all these, thing, all these things are good, all these things are beneficial. And we have to try, inshallah, to do whatever we can in whatever way we can possible. So this is the material way. But we know that the material way of aiding our brothers and sisters, while it is uh, necessary and while it is good, but we also know that nothing can happen without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these material ways of helping, they can be suppressed. They can be suppressed. So this aid and money that we can send to help our brothers and sisters can be cut off. They can close the, uh, the, the ports, they can close the roads, and it cannot reach them. Speaking up and letting people know the situation, our voices can be suppressed. Censorship can happen. The algorithm, algorithms on the media can change, the social media can change, and our voices can be suppressed in that way. Demonstrations, boycotts, these things can become, uh, they can be, they can become a matter of illegal. They can become made illegal, as we have seen attempts to do so. So the material means can be suppressed, but the divine means of helping our brothers and sisters cannot be suppressed. And that is by seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help uh, and aid. And of course, we combine both of them. We combine the material way of helping our brothers and sisters. And this is part of uh, taking the means, akhtul asbab, which is something necessary, that we don't just rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and not do anything. We have to do our part. And after we have done our part, then we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we also have to maintain the divine way of helping our brothers and sisters. And that is, of course, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who says about himself, Call upon me and I will answer you. I answer the call of the caller when he calls. Who is the one who uh, answers the call of the one who is in distress, in distress and removes the difficulties and removes the calamities? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in particular, there are certain types of du'as that are even more likely to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of them is the, the du'a of the one who has been oppressed. The one who has been oppressed. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in the hadith, وَاتَّقِي دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ And fear and be careful. Don't ever let yourself be on the uh, receiving end of a du'a from a person who is oppressed. وَاتَّقِي دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ Be careful of the du'a of the one who is oppressed. فَلَيْسَ uh, فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ Because there is no barrier between the dua of the one who is oppressed and between Allah answering that dua. So this is the foremost thing that we can do to help our brothers and sisters in addition to the material means as we mentioned before. To call upon us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely and make dua to him to relieve the situation that our Muslim brothers or sisters are in in Palestine and across, across the world in other countries and other localities as well. Let's take a look at a few examples of da'watul mazloom, the call of the oppressed. As Allah mentions in the Quran, we have the example of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel, they were oppressed. They were oppressed for many years by the biggest tyrant and the biggest zalim mentioned in the Quran and probably in all of human history, and that is Fir'aun. The Fir'aun. The one who said, I am your Lord the Most High. The one who said, I don't know of any gods that you have besides me. The one who propped himself up arrogantly in the land. The Fir'aun, he propped himself up arrogantly in the land. And the one who split up, split up his people and divided his people. And the one who oppressed a group of them, منهم, and he oppressed a group of them to the point where he started to slaughter their male children. منهم, أبناءهم, نساءهم, and he, be, he, be, he was, it got to the point where he was started to slaughter the male children and he left the female children alive. This is Fir'aun, the biggest tyrant mentioned in the Quran. And Musa alayhi salam, along with who? Bani Israel. Bani Israel. And if you look at what happened to Bani Israel in the past, as mentioned in the Quran, and the oppression that they went through, and the suffering that they went through, and then we compare it to what's going on today, we see a huge irony of who was oppressed, as mentioned in the Quran, all those thousands of years ago, and who is doing the oppression today. It's a very big irony that this can, something like this can happen to the very people who were oppressed and, were, uh, and faced this type of humiliation. So Musa alayhi salam for years and Bani Israel they were oppressed by Fir'aun and his people. And the scholars have mentioned this went on for over 40 years. 40 years Fir'aun and his uh, officers and his chiefs they put the pressure and oppressed and humiliated and disgraced Bani Israel. And Allah mentions that Musa alayhi salam tried different ways of giving da'wah to Fir'aun and his people and this went on for a long time until Musa alayhi salam got uh, or he ran out of whatever patience he had and Allah mentions the dua that Musa alayhi salam made against his oppressor Allah says in the Quran وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So Musa alayhi salam after enduring years years of oppression years of disgrace and, and humiliation he finally makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the oppressor and he says that oh Allah oh our Lord you have given Fir'aun and his chiefs all of the luxuries and riches of this world but all they have done is that they have averted others from your path so Musa alayhi salam is saying that they've enjoyed themselves long enough 
You've given them all the, the riches in the world, but all they have done is commit, commit mischief and oppression on the earth. رَبَّنَا لِيُضِلُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ So they have called apart, apart from their way. رَبَّنَا مِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ So then Musa alayhi salam makes dua against them. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, obliterate their wealth. رَبَّنَا مِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ And harden their hearts. Harden their hearts. فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوْا الْعَذَابِ الْأَلِيمِ So that they do not believe until they see the painful punishment. So Musa alayhi salam made this dua that, O oh Allah, get rid of them, obliterate them and their wealth, and harden their hearts so they don't have even a chance to uh, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until they say, until they see the painful punishment. And this is exactly what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the order, فَأَسْرِ بِعِبَادِي لَيْلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُتَّبَعُونَ So, take, uh, take you and your, your tribe and leave at night. Allah commanded them to leave at night and you will be followed. And so Fir'aun followed them along with his army. فَأَتْبَعَهُمْ فِرْعَوْنُ بِجُنُودِهِ بَغْيًا وَعَدْوَىٰ And Fir'aun followed them in, uh, in, uh, in enmity and in oppression. And then they got and they caught up to Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel and even Bani Israel when they were when Fir'aun's army caught up to them they started to panic and they started to uh, lose hope. So when they saw that the two sides met, Pharaoh's army finally caught up. Then Bani Israel, they began to panic and they said to Musa, we're going to be caught. They're going to catch us and they're going to uh, take, us, take us out. They're going to obliterate us. And Musa alayhi salam responded, he said, No, Musa said, no, that Allah is with me and he will truly guide me to the way. And so then Allah Azza wa Jal inspired to Musa, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ يَضْرُبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرُ Take your staff and hit the sea, and then the sea split open. And each side were like mountains, and they crossed the sea. And Fir'aun, in his arrogance, and in his takabbur, he entered into that sea, thinking that he would also be able to cross, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the waves to come, and they were all swallowed and drowned by the waves. And as he was drowning, as the, the waves were coming to Fir'aun, he tried to declare his iman at the very end. He tried to then uh, declare his iman at the very last minute. But as Musa's dua said, harden their hearts. Do not make them believe until they see the painful punishment. And so he saw that painful punishment coming to him and he tried to declare his iman but it was not accepted from him. As Allah says, Now are you going to try to repent when you have caused corruption, chaos and fit and fasad in the earth? It's not going to be accepted anymore. So this was the dua of Musa alayhi salam to the one who oppressed him and his people for years, over 40 years of oppression, of humiliation and disgrace. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the call of Musa alayhi salam and he got rid of and destroyed Fir'aun and his chiefs and all of his people. So this is the, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the call and this did not occur overnight. This occurred over years. Musa alayhi salam and Bani, Bani Israel, they waited years, years and years before Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of Fir'aun and his chiefs. We fast forward to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, along with the companions, they also faced oppression, particularly in the very early years in Mecca. For 13 years, they were oppressed, an oppressed minority. They had no means of defending themselves to the point where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed some of his companions to leave and go to the land of Al-Habasha in present-day Ethiopia because they cannot bear the uh, oppression that they were going through. So Rasulullah allowed some of them to leave. And this is the situation that continued on for years in the uh, Meccan phase of oppres oppression and humiliation and all sorts of uh, disgrace and even to the level of killing uh, to some of the companions. It's mentioned in one of the hadiths during this period of the Meccan phase uh, that Rasulullah was praying at the Kaaba. He was praying at the Kaaba. And as he went into sujood, 
the Quraysh, the leaders of the Quraysh, amongst them Abu Jahl, who is the Fir'aun of this Ummah, and some of his companions, they started to talk amongst themselves, and they started to plot and plan a way to disgrace Rasulullah And so Abu Jahl said, which one of you is going to go and get the intestines of the camel of such and such person and put it on top of Rasulullah as he's praying? And the worst of them, a man by the name of Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id, he volunteered for the task. And he went and he got the insides, the intestines of this camel, and he brought it as Rasulullah was in the sajda and he put it on Rasulullah as he was in sajda. Extremely disrespectful thing to do. And Rasulullah stayed in that position. He did not get up. And as he was in that position, the uh, the intestines of this animal is on him and it's probably very heavy this is the intestines of a camel it's not something light it's on him he's in this state of sujood and they are laughing and they are mocking him as he's in this state and he's not getting up and he's staying in that position and it was not until Fatima the daughter of Rasulullah bint Rasulullah Sayyidatu Nisa'i Ahl Jannah the uh, leader of the women of paradise it was not until she came and she removed the intestines from the back of Rasulullah then he was uh, able to get up. Before that, the one who's narrating this incident, Abu, uh, Ibn, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says that I saw this incident unfolding and I couldn't do anything. And he was complaining that I saw this happening and I could not do anything. I was just watching. But he was a person who was also in a very weak state. He was not a slave, but he was just a level above a slave. So he did not have any power or authority uh, amongst the Meccan society. So he was in this position watching this unfold. And he says, I could not do anything. And so Fatima uh, radiallahu anha, she comes and she takes off the, uh, the intestines of this camel from the back of Rasulullah And then he stands up. And then he stands up. And he makes dua against those who have oppressed them. And he says, Rasulullah says three times, he makes dua against Quraysh. Allahumma alayka bi Quraysh. Allahumma alayka bi Quraysh. Allahumma alayka bi Quraysh. Three times, he makes dua to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against Quraysh. And when he started to make this dua, they started to become worried and they started to become very shaken, Abu Jahl and his companions. Because they knew that duas, especially in that place, in front of the Kaaba, are answered. They know that. And so they started to get very worried that Rasulullah was making dua against them. And after he made a general dua against Quraysh, then he started to name names. And he started to call them out one by one. He said, Allahumma alayka bi Abi Jahl, wa alayka bi Utbat ibn Rabi'ah, wa Shaybat ibn Rabi'ah, wa Walid ibn Utbah, wa Umayy ibn Khalaf, wa Uqbat ibn Abi Mu'id. He started to call them out one by one. Names of those who took part in this disgusting action. Putting the intestines of the camel, on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he called them out one by one by name and made du'a against them. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud he says that he swears, I swear by the by the one whose uh, whose who, uh, who, whose my soul in, is uh, in his hands. I swear by the one who possesses my soul that everyone, everyone who Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi named in that du'a against them, I saw all of them in the wells down buried in the wells at the Battle of Badr, after the Battle of Badr. They were all killed. They were all killed and put into the wells of Badr after the Battle of Badr. So this was the dua of Rasulullah against those who were oppressing him. And Allah answered this dua years later. It did not occur right away. It occurred years later, but Allah answered the dua and he uh, took revenge for his prophet on what these people did and he all of the leaders, the main leaders of Quraysh were killed on the day of Badr. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua of the believers. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Kathiran Tayyiba Mubarakan Fi Wa Sallallahu Wa Sallam Wa Ala Sayyidina Wa Maulana Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in Imam Al-Bukhari Wa Imam Muslim 
narrates from Abu Hurair radiallahu an, who says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah tayyibun, la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Wa inna Allah amar al-mu'mineen bima amar bihi al-mursaleen. فقال تعالى يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات وعملوا صالحا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل السفر أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا ربي يا ربي ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له and then uh, then uh, Imam Al Bukhari narrates from Abu Hurairah as well يُسَجَابُ الْإِحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ يُسَجَابُ الْإِحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ يَقُولُ دَعُوتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي Rasulullah s.a.w. says in hadith that Allah is tayyib, Allah is pure. And He does not accept anything except that is pure. And Allah has ordered the believers with what He has ordered the messengers. And He says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلُ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ O messengers, eat from the tayyibat, the pure. And do what is Good, do the righteous deeds. And Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kuru min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. O you who believe, uh, eat from the pure things that we have given you, provided for you. And then Rasulullah s.a.w. mentions a man, a man who has been on a very long journey, very long journey. And he is dusty and disheveled. And he's in a desperate situation. And he calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he has all of the ingredients needed for an accepted dua. He's traveling. He's in a state of desperation. He is observing the etiquette of dua, calling Allah on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He's raising his hands in dua. And he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this state of desperation, which on normal circumstances we would expect that Allah would answer this dua. But then Rasulullah says that there's a problem with his dua. And this problem is that وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامٌ His food is haram. وَمَشْرَبُهُ حَرَامٌ His drink is haram. وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ And his clothing is haram. وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامٌ And his sustenance and his livelihood is haram. He's earning haram. Uh, he's earning uh, his livelihood from haram means. فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ Then how is his dua going to be accepted? So we mentioned that the best way we can help our brothers and sisters is by dua. But we need to also do or uh, fix ourselves in a way to make our du'as be accepted. If our entire haram the haram, then how are we going to expect the du'a to be answered? As this man who is on this long journey, disheveled and dusty, raising his hands, but his du'a is not being answered because his life revolves around haram. So we're making the du'a and we're wondering why it's not being accepted. Maybe there's a reason why it's not being accepted it comes back to us. So we need to do what is upon us to make sure and ensure that our dua is accepted. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu says uh, that يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحْدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَبْ That a person's dua will be accepted. Your dua will be accepted on the condition that you do not uh, become impatient and you're not hasty. You're not hasty. يَقُولُ دَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ A person says, I made dua. I made the dua but it hasn't been accepted. Complaining. Once you do that, then now you have nullified the dua you're making. Once you start to say, Allah hasn't answered our duas, now you have negated that dua that you've made. So, yes, the solution is dua, but we need to make sure that we are doing uh, what is upon us for our dua to be accepted, fixing ourselves internally, and as well observing the correct etiquettes of dua amongst them, not uh, rushing and not being a patient when it comes to the dua being answered. As we mentioned in the pre two previous examples of how long Musa and Bani Israel, they endured the oppression upon the hands of Fir'aun before the du'as were accepted. And same thing for Rasulullah and the companions, 13 years in Mecca and then several years in Medina before they finally uh, conquered uh, Mecca and uh, the Quraysh uh, entered into Islam uh, together. So we need to make sure that we make our du'a but we also ensure that our du'a is being accepted by doing the prerequisites of the du'a and that involves fixing ourselves internally and observing the correct etiquettes of du'a. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix our affairs. Allahumma aslih ahwalana wa tawalla amrana warham mawtana wa shfi mardana wa taqabbal shuhadaana wa astur awratina wa amin rawatina 
يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم فارج الهم كاشف الغم وجيب دعوة المضطرين رحمن الدنيا ورحيمهما أنت ترحمنا اللهم ارحمنا فإنك بنا رحم ولا تعذبنا فإنك علينا قادر واطلف لنا مولانا بما فيما جرت به المقادير ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم انصر وفرج عن إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر وفرج عن إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر وفرج عن إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم كن لهم ناصرا وحافظا وأمينا اللهم احفظهم من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم وعن يمينهم وعن شمالهم ومن فوقهم ونعوذ بعظمتك أن يغتالوا من تحتهم ربنا لا تؤاخذنا بما نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله اتقوا الله يرحمني ويرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يدعوه فاذكروا الله العليم يذكركم ادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة